I'm Andrew Bell and uh, <coughs> I'm Scott living in London and I thought it was interesting to have a look at uh, some of the forecasts we made for oil revenues for Scotland in the event that independence came about or indeed uh, the oil revenues coming to the United Kingdom exchequer in the event that independence doesn't go ahead and uh, <coughs> I do that from a perspective of a former oil analyst and someone who's running a mineral company and we're just starting to do some oil drilling in England and uh, also in the United States and uh, so the first thing is to look at this as a starting point what the revenues to the Treasury have been in 2012-13 and 2013-14 and they were 4.4 billion pounds in 2012-13 uh, in 2013-14 3.6 billion pounds so a decline of uh, about 800 million pounds and with the inclusion of petroleum revenue tax the totals are 6,130 million pounds, 6.13 billion pounds uh, going down to 4.67 billion pounds so that is a decline of um, 1.45 billion pounds um, now is this something that is going to continue or not? That's the question, because what the uh, Scottish National Party has been suggesting is that by 2018 the revenues to Scotland alone would be £5.7 billion. Pounds. Now, the figures I've just been giving you are therefore the United Kingdom. Let's assume that 90% of those revenues are for the Scottish sector. It'll be something between 80 and 90 percent because most of the oil is in off Scottish waters and, Scotland, and oil is higher value than gas. We're then talking about the total revenues for the last two years being about 5.5 billion attributable to Scotland going down to about 4.2 billion attributable to Scotland and the suggestion that by 2018 it would be 5.7 billion. Now, on the face of it, you might say, well, that doesn't sound too unlikely, but in fact, I think it's extremely unlikely. Uh, if we look at another table I have here uh, from the uh, government, tax from the, the this is the tax revenues. Um, you look here, chart C2, UK oil and gas production, sterling oil price, and total expenditure. Now these three series are all based from 2000 as an index of 100. So all three lines come together at the point 100 in 2000 and then you see the changes since. Now from 2000 to 2003 the oil price didn't change very much and from 2000 to 2003 the production from uh, British offshore waters didn't change very much. Therefore there wasn't a big difference over that period in the uh, tax revenues going to the British government. But from 2003 to the present, there's been a decline from that index of about 100 to something between 30 or 40. In other words, a 60-70% decline in production. And you would have thought that would result in a huge decline in revenues, but it hasn't. And the reason it hasn't is because from 2003 to the present, there has been an even more significant rise in the oil price. And that rise in the oil price, as you can see here, is from 100 to about 360. So that's a massive increase. It's masked the effects of the decline in North Sea oil production. And that decline is something that has long been forecast. It's a result of natural depletion of these fields. Uh, and the replacement production that is coming in is in more and more distant waters. For example, people are now exploring three and a half hour helicopter ride uh, west of the Shetlands uh, and on the edge of the continental shelf. That's about as, um, you know, as, as extreme as you can get and once you've done that sort of thing there's not that much uh, left but it's also very high cost production. So what's happened in the last few years is that uh, you've actually got, le looking here at the corporation tax revenues, you've got them in the 1990s uh, going down to less than a billion pounds a year, three, four hundred million a year. The end of the 1990s, 
And then over that period from 2000 to about 2003 that I said to you was more or less static, it has remained, it remained at about two and a half, three and a half billion pounds a year from uh, corporation tax and total revenues at about four and a half to five billion a year. But from 2003, four onwards, it began to take off as the oil price rose. And so it went to seven, seven, six, ten, five, seven, nine, four, three and a half. And, and that's where we are now. So in the last three years, from 2011 and 12, despite higher oil prices, the corporation tax receipts have fallen from 8.8 .8 to 3.5 billion already. And over that period, the uh, petroleum revenue tax receipts have fallen from 2 billion to 1.7 to 1.1 in the latest year. That downward trend is even with not a great deal of change in uh, production over, th over that year or two um, and with prices remaining very high. But the overwhelming probability is that prices are, are not going to remain at these levels. If they remained at these levels, the reduction in production would still carry on and there would still be a decline in corporation tax revenues. Even more significantly, there would, I think, be a decline in petroleum revenue tax revenues because against petroleum revenue tax you can offset a lot of expenditure and if we look now at the deck figures moving from the revenue figures to the Department of Energy and Climate Change you can see capital expenditure has actually had a huge recent increase in the last three years it's gone from not in, uh, they're actually not including the latest year which I don't have figures but the three years before that um, non-exploration um, and appraisal expenditure, in other words, development expenditure, went from uh, and maintenance went from 7.4 to 10.7 to 13.3, and I'd suggest that the latest year is probably higher. In part, that represents a more bullish attitude towards development because of high oil prices, but uh, in part, it also represents the fact that you are really in the expensive fields now. You're draining the bottom of the barrel. Uh, and to the extent that this high level of expenditure may be not discretionary but necessary, even if the oil price comes down, it will be sticky downwards, it won't come down very much. Therefore, it is likely that uh, if the oil price comes down, not only will corporation tax revenues come down quite substantially, but the petroleum revenue tax revenues will really fall off a cliff. So my uh, best estimate of oil prices over the next few years is not that they remain more or less where they are, but that they fall very sharply. Now, it's a phenomenon of forecasters, but if they're asked to forecast a year ahead, whether it's copper prices, or whether it's the sterling dollar exchange rate or anything else, they will tend to cluster around where the price is now. They will suggest that maybe there might be a 10% movement up or a 10% movement down. But if you actually look at the historic pattern of sterling dollar rates in the floating exchange rate era, the last half century, every time that relationship changed direction, the amplitude of the movement was actually about 50%. In other words, moves tend to be much more than people expect. So which direction, if there were to be a change, would the oil price go in from here? Well. You look at what it's done the last few years, it's gone up a lot. So when something has gone up that much more than the rate of inflation or than the rate of economic growth in a short time, it must be more likely that it is going to fall than to rise, unless something absolutely fundamental has occurred to change technology. So that's the first reason for thinking we should be cautious. But there's a second reason. We look at what has actually been happening in the United States. Now here we're looking at Forbes, the business magazine, and they have one or two very useful graphs here. One of these is showing US crude oil production, which is at a 25-year high. It's, it's been in a long-term downtrend until recently, and it has now started to rise very sharply. Uh, from recent lows of below 5 million barrels a day, 
it's expected to reach 9.2 billion barrels 2015, 16, and then 9.6 billion barrels. So it'll be something like 10 billion barrels within a couple of years. And that will be more than Russia, more than Saudi Arabia. It will mean that in the last, over a period of five years or so, American oil production will have doubled. And what's the reason for that? Well, I think all of us probably uh, know part of the reason, which is uh, the oil shale boom, fracking and horizontal drilling, uh, in particular in the Marcellus Basin in Pennsylvania, but also in the Eagle uh, Trend in, in uh, Texas. And Marcellus has been very big. And what is really interesting there is what started off as relatively high cost exploration has actually become commoditized and become much cheaper. Here is an article um, on Marcellus shale drilling becomes more efficient. And it's saying here, we've become so much more efficient. Uh, the well not only will require half the time to drill, the drill bore will extend further horizontally than older wells. Since I came up here three years ago, it's 200% better. Everything is becoming more efficient and the cost of wells is going down. The length of the drills horizontally is increasing. Now everywhere I go I hear this. I heard it from people involved in this in Australia on a recent visit. I hear it when I go to the United States. This means that the uh, economic cost of producing oil shales is, is no longer uh, a very high cost. Uh, it's getting cheaper and cheaper. It's rather like the early days of uh, geared, of automatic gearboxes in cars. To start with, it's only very large cars with a two-liter capacity that would have automatic gearboxes fitted. And people said, oh well, it's too expensive, too difficult to put it in smaller ones. But eventually it came down and every car could have them and it became commoditized. What is happening at the moment is that the technological uh, advances in fracking and oil shale production are also affecting gas production in the States and they're reducing the cost of production very significantly. This is leading to a massive increase in production which will continue. As these techniques go international and as the ports in America adapt to be able to export that gas, you are going to get these pricing pressures in the United States that have already led to a lot of jobs being reshored from China back to the United States because it's cheaper to manufacture in the States than in China, uh, you will see the exportation of these lower prices around the world. So the United States is a huge factor there. Another factor is Iran. Iran has more or less been out of the market and is likely to come back in to the extent of at least a million barrels a day. Another factor is Iraq. Now you may say Iraq is actually going to the dogs at the moment. But compared with where it has been, it is actually slightly rebuilding. And uh, Iraq has the biggest simple reserves outside Saudi Arabia and has the potential for very large production. So when I look around the world, I don't see incipient bad things happening to uh, oil production. I see a, a plenty. I see a glut. And that will undo some of the rise in prices over the last few years. Now, if, as I expect, the oil price comes down, then what you're going to have on this graph here is you're going to get maybe a 33% to 50% decline. Let's say 33% from the current levels. So that uh, 370 or so will go back to about 200 and something. What's that going to do for revenues? I think it's going to reduce revenues within two or three years to 1.5 billion pounds a year for Scotland. And I would be surprised if that doesn't happen. Something in the range 1.5 to 1.7 is the most probable outcome. That is a 3 billion pound gap, 4 billion pound gap, 3.5 billion pound gap between what the Scottish Government is forecasting and what I think is most likely to happen. That means that something like 500 or 600 pounds a year of government services per person is not going to be available. For a family of four, that's something like 2,400 pounds of government services that the Scottish government will not be able to afford. 
because its budgeting doesn't allow for it. Therefore, it's important to consider the high risk involved in relying on a continuous regime of high production and high oil prices that instinct, common sense and observation tell one is not going to be there. Thank you.